everybody, welcome back to the Claremont Classic Garage. Today we're going to be working under the hood of our 2003 Ram 3500. I've been really busy getting a lot of the little bolt-on parts cleaned up and, and painted. So it at least looks decent for a little while anyway. And you can see here I've decided to paint the engine red. Um, it, it's not like a show quality job by any means. I, I just, I first I painted it black and I, it just looks so boring in there. And it's so hard to work on when everything under the hood is black. So I said, heck with it. When I was still working, um, the buses started coming in with 6.7s in them, and they were this nice bright red color, and I really liked it. Those engines looked sharp. So I said, to hell with it. We painted it red. I've also gone ahead and pulled the front cover off because we have to change the, the front seal because there was oil leaking all over the place. Although, um, since I got that off, I kind of wonder if some of these bolts were kind of loose. The ones that were screwed into right into the aluminum housing were all tight, but the ones that passed through that housing into the block were, were loose. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's off now. We're going to pull this off. I'll, I'll clean this up and paint it while it's off. We're going to lash the valves, go through all that, and then we could start putting stuff back together. And incidentally, by absolute coincidence, the last time I shut the thing off, whenever that was, look where it stopped with the timing marks perfectly aligned. I mean, that's a one in a million, eh? First job is to get the valve cover off. It's split, it's in two pieces. You can see an upper and a lower. Uh, we'll pull them both off because I'm pretty sure the lower was leaking back in that, in that back corner and we wanna replace the gasket. We'll start by removing the, the crankcase filter. Get that out of the way. We've got a new one to put on there and we'll uh, go from there. Well, there's the top one off. It's nice to see that the engine is not all full of sludge and stuff. And also um, encouraging is when I first pulled the, the valve cover off, I didn't have the smell of uh, diesel fuel wafting out, which would give you the impression that it's overfueling and possibly washing the bores. So what we have to do now is we have to, um, you'll see here the, the wiring for the fuel injectors passes through this piece. So we have to um, get these two unplugged and we have to undo the wires from the actual injector solenoids and then we can lift the lower valve cover off. When you take the wires off the injectors, you'll see here the nut is captive onto the uh, injector pigtail. So that makes it easy to get those off. And now we're going to go right down the middle of it. There's um, uh, bolts here. You need a 10 millimeter socket. And there's just a row of them right down the center of the engine. And then we'll be able to get this cover off. Once we've got the row of bolts out, uh, this baby comes right out. Now, bear in mind, if you're uh, just doing a valve adjustment, uh, oops, you don't have to take this thing off. We're just taking it off because we suspect a leak. Now we'll get in the service manual and find out the order that we lashed them in and what the actual lash is. Um, even though it's a four valve head, you can see here there's, there's bridges across them. So you, uh, you only have to make one adjustment to adjust both valves. This here is a nifty little Cummins um, uh, service kit that I got all oh, years and years ago. It, it, it's a, mostly tailored for the, the old 12 valve engines. This here, I bought this separate and threw it in here. That's the wrench for the, the fuel pump on a 12 valve engine. Um, we can use this to lash the valves on this. All I have to do, I will find the right Allen key. There's an Allen key missing that I need for a 24 valve engine and I'll just leave it in this kit. Uh, but what we are gonna use is this. This is an engine barring tool. So what you do, there's a plate down there on the side of the bell housing and this guy just goes in there and uh, engages with the ring gear. 
I'm gonna have to put a bristle brush in there and clean it out. It's all full of junk from never ever being used. Before we set the valves, we need to make sure that the engine is at top dead center on number one cylinder. So there's like four different ways you can do that. Um, there's actually more ways. If you had this injector out, you could, I guess you could drop a, a probe down there and feel the piston come right to the top. But anyway, we're going to assume that the injectors are in. Um, number one, if you've got the front cover off, there you are. The, the timing marks are lined up. And not only do we know that number one is at top dead center, we know because the marks line up here, it's at top dead center on the compression stroke. It's, it's firing right now. Um, if you've got the cover on, you want to look for this pin in the balancer. You see this pin here? That's at the top. It lines up with that dowel, which is top dead center. There's also marks on the front balancer um, again you can see there there's our dowel pin and you can see here it's punched top dead center and there's also a mark uh, it's faint but you can see it right there on the edge of it when you're looking at these from the outside you don't know if it's at top dead center on the compression stroke or top dead center on the exhaust stroke to determine that um, all you have to do is check the check the rockers. If both these rockers on number one are loose, you know you're at top dead center on the compression stroke. So that's where we are. And um, when you're in that position, I've already gone ahead and done it, you can do the intakes on one, two, and four, and you do the exhaust on one, three, and five. Now we're going to turn the crankshaft 360 degrees so that this is at top dead center again, but number one will be at top dead center on the exhaust stroke, and then we can lash the rest of the valves. To do that, we're going to use our barring tool down there to turn the engine one full revolution. A word of warning, if your truck is a stick shift like this one, make sure it's in neutral, otherwise... It'll turn the rear wheels and you could pull your truck off the stands if it's on stands or run yourself over. So now you can see here, we're at top dead center on the exhaust stroke of number one. And to confirm that, you can see both rockers tight because uh, the camshaft is in its overlap phase right now. So now we could carry on and adjust all the valves we didn't adjust previous. So we'll be doing the intake valves first, and we're going to be doing numbers three, five, and six. We're going to do this intake one first. Um, the intakes are the ones with the short rockers, by the way, or the valves to this side of the head, right? Um, you get your feeler gauge in here underneath this little swivel, underneath that little swivel, and you can feel there that's pretty loose. So I'll show you how I do it. Um, a five millimeter Allen key and a nine sixteenths wrench. I don't know why it's mixed up like that, but that's how it is. Get this. There we go. Get the nut that pretty tight that nut. So now what I do, I loosen the nut just a hair, and then I slowly, slowly and gently turn that in until I start to feel a pretty good drag on the feeler gauge. Right, I, I like to set them just a tad loose. So that, it's got a pretty decent drag on there. Um, and usually when you when you tighten the nut up, the, the drag will go away. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, that's perfect. So uh, these are 10, the intakes are 10 thousandths of an inch. So that's set perfectly to 10 thousandths of an inch. Now we'll do an exhaust. Um, this is the last valve we have to do. I, I've done them all already. I just want to do these last two to show you. So the exhausts are set to 20. And that one there, that's also quite loose. There we go. That's a little bit loose. So same procedure. We're just going to run this in until it gets nice and tight. And then tighten that up. And you should feel just a not really play in there but not really like too draggy. That's perfect.
And always as you adjust the valves, just touch them with a piece of chalk, just so you know that that valve has been, has been done. So that's it, that's all of them done now. Um, we can put our valve covers back on. We can get our new lower gasket put together here. It fits in this groove. Oh, look at that, yeah, stretch it a little bit. There we go. Just work it around in there. And then we can get our lower valve cover installed. Now I can slide this thing in here and you have to be very careful you don't catch it and pull that because you don't have a ton of room up here under the cowl. But there we go, it fits. Good. Now I gotta look up in my book and see what the heck I'm supposed to torque these to. So the rocker housing, we torque to 18 foot pounds. Like that, and we'll just work our way up and down it. That gasket is a pretty thick piece of rubber. It'll probably take a couple of uh, goes to get all these bolts tight. Now we get the wires back on the injectors and uh, they torque to 13 inch pounds. I haven't got anything that goes down that low. So I just used my little stubby quarter inch ratchet and made sure they're tight. Now we can close her up. Now we can go around and get our the gasket for our lid pushed into the groove here. Before we stick this guy on, I'm just going around and smearing a little silicone grease on the surface of the gasket just to help it kind of dig in and slide around and seal good. So same as the other one, we don't want to catch it on the, the rockers and pull the gasket off. So we get it in and just drop it down. There we go. The upper gasket comes with new O-rings for our bolts, so we'll get them on and we'll put just a little smear of oil or something or grease or something on them before we put it in so they, uh, they don't uh, stick and twist. There's only six bolts holding the top cover on and uh, you start from the center and work your way out and they torque to 18 foot pounds. Now we're going to install our new breather filter. Um, make sure you grease up the O-ring on it. And there should be another, there we go, another line. Put the two lines on. And in she goes. Then we'll install the two bolts. Now technically this thing should go on here first, but I've got a little... Uh, detail work to do on this later so I'm not going to worry about that now but I will put the oil cap on for now. And we can plug our injector harnesses back in while we're here. Now we're going to change our front seal. We already had the cover off and I've got it cleaned up. First step is you knock the seal out from the inside out there's our old seal out now we're going to push in our new seal manual says push it in from the back we have to be careful because you see there it's got a little plastic thing that protects the lip when we install the cover onto the engine and this has got to be pushed through to a certain depth but we'll We'll deal with that next. First, we're just going to get this thing started in. There she goes, nice and straight. Okay, let me get it out of here. We'll go back to the bench. That there is about the depth we need the seal installed to. Um, this little this little dust seal goes in there, goes in there with it. So you need to leave room for it. Now we're ready to put the cover on. Uh, we've gone and put a bead of silicone around it. We're just letting that kind of skin up a little bit and then we'll put the cover on. 
Now we can put this thing on. So what we got to do is get that plastic thing that protects the lip of the seal over the snout of the crank, like so, and then get that lined up nice. And we can go ahead and start getting some bolts in. There's a long one. Now the rest are short ones. Sort of get that there we go we'll get that started on and then we're just going to go around and slowly get all these bolts started this sleeve um number one it protects the seal and number two it gets this cover absolutely perfectly centered now we're going to go and uh torque all these bolts to 18 foot pounds Once everything is torqued, we'll just pull our protector out and we're all set. Now this little dust seal goes in there, just like that. And that protects the lip of the oil seal. Now we can screw in this little plastic cap that just covers the, um, the drive gear for the fuel pump. You don't tighten it much, just enough to Make it not leak, it's just a piece of plastic. Now we're gonna change the fuel filter. It's inside this canister here. We need a one and an eighth socket to get the lid off. Here comes the lid. And we have to be really careful. We don't want any junk at all going down inside here while we're doing this. And I put a drain pan underneath it because I'm not sure. And there's our filter. It comes out with the lid. Take this over to the bench. Now I got to drain this. I'm not sure which way it goes. That way, there we go. It's going to make a mess, but it's got to get drained because we do not, we've now mixed the, the fuel from the clean and dirty sides of the filter, and we do not want that. So we're going to just drain the whole housing. Look at all the junk there. That's from the dirty side of the filter. Now that that's done draining, I've wiped the housing all out, and I can close the valve. So you see here, our, our filter just snaps into this, this lid here. One well, of these little fingers. There, it's coming out now. Just get it out of there. There. And that's all there is to that. Now, while we've got this open, we'll just give this a wipe. And we can put on a new O-ring. Here's our new O-ring. And we'll just run this around here. That'll just make sure it's not twisted. We can get our new filter. And it's just going to snap in like that. Isn't that funny? So you can see here these donkeys have made this. So it just, it, it's just bad. But anyway, we're going to put this in. Now, as tempting as it is, you do not want to you do not want to fill this canister with fuel because then you'll be mixing clean fuel into our uh, unfiltered fuel into the clean side of the filter. We just don't want to do that. We will let the lift pump fill it up. It may take a little cranking to get it to start, but that's the safest way. And then we'll just tighten this up. We've got the power steering pump mounted back on. Now we're gonna change these two lines. Uh, the new one, uh, interesting. <laughs> the, that's the pressure outline from the pump. Came with this thing. Don't ask me what in the world that is. 
I mean, this thing already has a couple of, I guess these are restrictors or something pushed into it. Um, there's, there is nothing like this on the original stock factory line. So don't ask me what that's all about. I ain't putting it on. Changing these is pretty straightforward. Um, the nut on the two lines are actually different sizes. So you can't, you can't put them backwards. They can only go on one way. Uh, make sure you install the new O-ring that comes with it. Just put a little oil on it. And, uh, well, make sure you take the old O-ring off before you put the new O-ring on. Sometimes it's almost like hiding on there. They, they blend right in. But uh, that's good. That's ready to go on. We'll get it screwed on there. And then we will uh, put another O-ring on the bottom and screw it into the bottom of the pump. That looks pretty nice. We've got our new Hydro Boost lines in, our pump. Everything got them all pointing the right way and everything like that. Now uh, we need to get our throttle position sensor and uh, we could start getting our intake sorted out. I've, I've got a great big piece of rubber I put underneath here um, to block crap from going down the manifold. So we can get that out of there, get our new gaskets put in and uh, that can be ready to go. That all went together perfect. So that's pretty much this side of the engine all put back together. Um, all that's left really is the, the air horn here. And that'll go on when I put the, the turbo pipe in. We'll do that kind of uh, as an assembly. Um, I've got my little piece of rubber that used to be under the grid heater on top of the grid heater now. Just to keep junk out of the engine. And uh, we should be good. Well, I guess that'll wrap it up for this one. That was a, a lot of work done. We got the valve set and the, the top end all put back together. Uh, we even got a coat of paint on the on the old thing. It's the big red beast now. Uh, and, and I'm glad I painted it red. I, I like that. The thing looks nasty. Um, I'm going to take off now. In the next video, we're going to get the stuff put on the front of it and maybe start working up around the other side. We've got the manifold and the turbo and all that other stuff to put on. It's just mostly bolt together stuff. There's not really any um, reimagining or, or fabricating or anything required there. It's just basically uh, bolting back on the parts we took off. So uh, hope to see you back here for that one. And uh, until then, this is Kevin saying so long from the Claremont Classic Garage.